I'm not sure if you've heard, but Windows 10 is coming to an end on October 14th, 2025. What does this mean for those of us who have no urge to upgrade to Windows 11? What options do we have? Well, firstly, I want to address that rumor that Windows 10 will automatically stop working at the cutoff date. This is absolutely not true. Your Windows will continue to work as normal, but you're going to be on your own. You see, from October 14th, 2025, no more software updates, no more security updates, no more bug fixes, and no software enhancements. As far as Microsoft is concerned, it's end of life for the product. And this should have you worried. So let's look at what we're going to do. We have a bunch of options. Option number one is do nothing and keep running Windows 10. When you switch on your computer on October 15th, nothing is going to change. The biggest issue you're going to have is security. If you're using third party antivirus apps, those will continue to work and keep protecting you. But what you're not going to get is security updates from Microsoft. And those are two very different things. The antivirus's job is to scan for malicious files, stop ransomware attacks and block those dodgy phishing websites. Whereas Microsoft Security Update's job is to actually fix the holes discovered in the Windows operating systems. It's these holes that are being exploited by hackers to take over your computer or use your computer as part of the hackers botnet network to attack other people. And of course, hackers are going to take advantage of the situation that Microsoft is no longer updating and patching Windows. And as soon as new holes are discovered, you're going to be left with a Swiss cheese of Windows. So unless you're planning on disconnecting from the internet, the lack of security updates should be a real concern. There is one saving grace, but boy, are you not going to like it. You can pay Microsoft to get ESU, which is the extended security updates. Now, we don't know how much that is for the home user, but to give you an idea, for a business using Windows 10, you would be paying $61 per computer for the first year. Then it doubles to $122 for the second year. And then it's at $244 for the third year. Again, per computer. And this is just for security updates. You're still not going to get those Windows updates. So if there's a new driver for your graphics card that crashes your computer, tough. You're going to be stuck using old drivers because Microsoft is not going to make it compatible for you. So yay. Okay, option number two, and you're not going to like this any better than paying for security updates. And that is to move to Windows 11. Now, I will say that Windows 11 today is so much better than when it first came out and got all this massive negative publicity. But it's not a step to be taken lightly. For some people, especially those who haven't bought a new computer in a while, your hardware may simply not support the Windows 11 requirements. You can go into your Windows update screen and you may see some info on the right side if your computer is capable of handling Windows 11. There is also the Windows PC Health Check app that checks your hardware to make sure that it's ready for Windows 11. Now, if your hardware doesn't meet these criteria, are you screwed? Actually, no. There are ways to get around the hardware checks, such as using a tool like win boot mate or there are other loads of youtube tutorials on how to get around those and of course microsoft doesn't recommend this but it's your call to make but does windows 11 actually work i will say that i've been using windows 11 on my laptop and it's been absolutely fine i have no compatibility issues anymore there are certain irritations that were actually addressed like having the task manager available again and it's pretty stable even running high-end apps like my video editing program. However, I know of people who've had nothing but trouble with Windows 11. So my advice would be, before you even think of updating, look for the way that you actually use your computer at the moment. If you're using things like Word, Excel, Outlook, web browsing, watching videos, you should be perfectly fine with Windows 11. But if you're connecting to various hardware devices such as MIDI and soundboards and run special music editing suites, I would definitely research those first to make sure that other people have had no issues with these applications in Windows 11. But if you hate Windows 11 so much, option number three is to pray that Windows 12 comes out soon and also hope that it's much better than Windows 11. <laughs> what does that look like? What will be the hardware requirements? When is it gonna be released? Nobody really knows beyond the 
it's coming in summer rumors. So you can take the wait and see approach, but remember, just like with any brand new operating system version, it's gonna take some time for the bugs to be worked out before it's nice and stable. So I'm just putting it out there as an option, not a good option, but an option. Okay, the next real option that you have right now and don't shoot the messenger here is to try a new operating system. Yes, you can of course try Mac OS, which means new hardware, new cost, and yeah. Or you can try the Chrome Flex OS. It's great for those old laptops or desktops that you basically just wanna turn them into Chromebooks instead of throwing those away. Uh, there's a whole bunch of stuff that you gotta do, but just know that it doesn't support Windows apps, so I'm gonna leave that right there. Another alternative operating system is Linux. Now, hear me out before you roll your eyes. Linux has come a long way from being that command line only and super geeky. There are version of Linux or distributions that have very Windows-like graphical interface. And there is a key downfall here. There is a learning curve of how things work because at the end of the day, it's not Windows. It's an entire new thing that you have to get your head around. Also, Linux as a desktop operating system is still a tiny percentage of the global operating systems. Therefore, mainstream software doesn't really prioritize their software to work on Linux, which basically means you're gonna to have to find a close alternative app or you're gonna to have to run something like Wine, which is kind of forces Windows programs to work, kinda. So again, same as Windows 11, you need to make sure that the software that you use on a daily basis will work first on Linux, otherwise, what's the point? And of course, if you're just using cloud stuff like Google Docs or browsing the web, then Linux is gonna work perfectly fine for you. I will say that even though Linux is free, it's certainly not for everyone. And before the Linux keyboard warriors hit the comments to say why Windows sucks, there is good news. The best bit about Linux is that you can actually try it out without removing Windows first to see if you like it and if everything works. Watch this video right over here of how to do exactly that. And before you head out, don't forget to give the video a quick thumbs up to like it. Don't forget to subscribe and I'll see you in this video. Let's go.